Hi everybody, it's Mark here at Tessery, and I want to do a quick video in regards to the price reaction um, to earnings, also just the general price action during the cash hours for today. Tesla closed pretty low during regular cash hours at $242.68, which is a drop of $12.17 or 4.78% during the course of the day. Now, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, we kind of, what we usually do is we kind of try to anticipate how price action works, right? How price action works, meaning that if you watch Tesla stock every day, and there's a lot of people here, and I, I listen to them on Twitter, I, I read them on Reddit, I read them on, um, I watch their videos on YouTube, and they always kind of see the same thing. It's like, they're not concerned with intraday price movements, but somehow they always know what the price of the stock is. And uh, and you can tell by their mood um, how that stock performs sometimes. And it's always very interesting. Um, but, you know, from for us that we kind of anticipated a lot of what happens and you can kind of see our drawings over the course of the past couple of days, even the past couple of weeks, we kind of understand because it's not we're like predicting the future, right? What we're doing is you're looking at how price usually works because Tesla has what? It really kind of works off momentum. It's it um, and you can see momentum exhaust. You can see how like this bear flag, um, which is the channel we are watching in the light blue lines over here and it kind of breaks down from it. And you can see how we are watching the yellow lines here, which form uh, the ascending triangle on the price action pattern, whatever, on Tesla. And we, we're talking about that if, and you can see from the red line we drew, that if it starts going down in the morning, it will continue to go down. And what this little squiggly line, that was me trying to interpret what it would try to do when it got to $245 a share. And you can see it tried to buoy itself. And that was that move that basically that drawing was, you know, seeing that consolidation at that at that very popular strike point um, for uh, Tesla, which is what five dollar increments, right? Five dollar increments is where price tries to catch itself. It it broke through the triangle to the bottom side, and then it got to two forty five, and it kind of stopped there. Um, and then at the last bit of the day, it sold off back to what exactly you know near the next strike point, which is what a two and a half dollar increment, two hundred forty two dollars and fifty cents, like these. These things are really influential when it comes to price action for, for Tesla. So we got that out of the way. We knew that was going to happen that if it, what, if it gaps down a little bit, if it starts selling off in the morning, we can anticipate what? It's kind of selling all day. And we kind of had two trajectories for how pricing will work even during the after hours. And, um, and these are the two paths that it would try to find either a base at what? The green line, which represents what? The long-term trend line from January. And that we, what did we say yesterday? That most stocks have already broken their long-term trend line from the bottom, be it beginning of this year or from October, which is the low from the S&P 500. We saw the S&P 500 break below its long-term trend line and work, try to work its way back up and it's, it's closed a couple of times above it, but it's still a very contested area. For Tesla, let's look at the extended hours trading. And we usually don't look at this, but it'll help you kind of understand um, how we try to like uh, predict uh, price action in, in in some sense. Okay, so the the there was a complete sell off during the, the end of the earnings call, and that was because you know Elon's uh, personality it doesn't really let him understand um, what he's uh, how he's conveying his message, which is he had a message that was quite I guess it was uh, appropriate to to inform investors of risk, right? But to to not provide any positives to the company or this or, or or whatever you're working on or and also not understanding the 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 tone he's taking when he's talking about risk and even positive things like, you know, oh, Cybertruck's coming out. But by the way, guys, temper your expectations. Cybertruck's going to take a long time to ramp up, even though we have one hundred twenty five thousand unit installed capacity. But we understand that price would fall through. And we're, we're anticipating price to catch at what? It was trying to catch at $235. It really didn't. Maybe the aftermarket hours wasn't really liquid enough. You can see that the volume is not comparable at all to cash hours. It's trying to find the bottom now at around what? Another $5 increment in pricing, $230 a share. Um, but we calculated for the week um, a lower EM of um, $227.50. And we know that the market was only anticipating a move of what? 4.7 percent i don't know what they're smoking but obviously um we talked about that before how that wasn't very realistic maybe we're finding a bottom here now i'm not too sure and we're going to look at some earnings from the past couple quarters and you can see how price uh even though it might find it's a, a base in the after hours but really what do we say all the time 
when when Tesla has momentum and it continues the momentum, sometimes the basing is just positioning, giving people time to go short, to go long, what have you. So we'll get away from the extended hours trading and you can see the paths again that we are looking for. So um, my downside target was around 227. I stayed short from the open and that's because that's what we talked about, right? Um, if we got during cash hours, like I, the caveat for me is during cash hours, if we got to $235 a share, um, I would have uh, definitely closed my short and maybe I would have paid the price for it, but maybe not because, you know, if I was to close a short here and it only dropped, you know, three or four more dollars a share, we know that IV would crush and that option might become completely worthless in a couple of minutes after the open. But maybe not though. Okay, so let's look at what happened in July real quick and we can just kind of try to mentally prepare ourselves. Are we gonna get a reversal? I don't know because we had a gap down when we had that pretty bad earnings report with also another bad earnings call. The gap down was 3.3.5%. And we thought like, okay, that's that's doable. We can work with 3.5%. That's not too bad because we had a nice, what? A pump during the course of the earnings day. So it went up during the course of the earnings cash hours. Um, and then, but today it was a sell all day. So you kind of have to add that together. It's a sell all day, a sell all in the after hours. And that's it's tough. It's tough for shareholders. But looking at the last um, quarter, so it went down three and a half percent. But like I said about momentum, it kind of continued to sell. And I guess over the course of just one day and one hour, basically um, by the end of the week, a Tesla dropped another 8.9 percent. And if you want to see what that would be from the close of the uh, of earnings day to the low intraday of the week or intra week, that was a 12 and a half percent drop. OK, thirty five dollars a share. And so far, what we what have we done today? Now, of course, this can't really be predictive of where we're going to find a base, um, but it does base and, and it kind of sells off sometimes uh, during the course of the of the day. So if we were to say that we fell, you know, four point eight percent and then we, after hours it added an additional whatever percent to make it a nine percent drop, what does a twelve percent drop look like? That puts us uh, somewhere in the range of like two hundred twenty two dollars to twenty three twenty three dollars a share. Hopefully we don't get to that point, um, but just know that in the morning there could be a gap down, of course, if there's if this holds, and then it could be a, a selling, uh, a sell off that continues uh, throughout the course of the week. And of course, macro conditions will definitely affect this. Um, macro conditions can either buoy the stock or keep sending it lower. Like for example, if something happens over the course of the night and S and P 500 sells off, don't be surprised if Tesla continues to sell off in sympathy with uh, the the S and P 500. Let's look at the spring consolidation and spring consolidation wasn't as long. But if you look at the pricing and the sorry, the price action, it's very similar. So firstly, let's look at the earnings reaction. So here's the earnings day. It gaps down 5.9% or 5.6%. And then over the course of the next, let's see if we can do by the end of the week. So where's Friday? Where's Friday? Okay, so Friday, it would sell 12%. Now that's very similar to what happened, what? last quarter, right? It, it's still 12%. What happens when things go up? And this is just to show you how momentum kind of works for Tesla. So here, when it gaps up on a good re um, reception of the report, it gapped up. What did it gap up? 12%. So that's one of the reason I'm saying that when we were, when we were trying to define um, our, our EMs for the week, which is uh, right now $227, yeah, $227, it's because that's a very large, um, it's a large move, larger than what the market expected, but you're starting to realize that's more commiserate with how Tesla usually works. And uh, so that's why we did what we did. But I wanted to show you again. So if you look at this price action and look at the structure, I'm gonna do a very crude drawing to un help you understand how price action can just be a kind of like a, has memory, right? So here's a price action. It makes this kind of larger hump with a higher high. It makes a lower low. It maybe probably forms like a, this kind of triangle shape. Um, this is much more defined than the one from spring, but you can kind of see how the price action has a very similar look and it just kind of sells off uh, during the course um, of the day after earnings. And you can see what happened here. What did we see here during the spring? We had a long consolidation, three months of consolidation. It makes a hump with a higher high, it makes a lower low and another hump. And guess what happens after earnings? It sells off 12%. So I'm not wanting the stock to sell off 12% more. I mean, obviously not, um, but it kind of gives you idea how to predict price movement in the future. And it's just, um, I don't know what people are smoking when they were thinking that it would only drop, you know, the move would only be four and a half percent for the week. So going into tomorrow, um, could we see lower EM? Maybe. Is that a point to go long? 
can't tell you that obviously, but maybe that uh, it, it is maybe that is the point where you can take a stab to go to the long side um, if it makes it down there. And, and who knows if it does? It's kind of basing right now around two hundred thirty one dollars a share. With the caveat though, is remember this EM was only for a move of about nine and a half percent. Well, this is actually ten percent. So ten and a half percent. We've seen what twelve point something percent drops in pricing, um, but at the same time, we have a we have kind of a different overall context. We have a multiple wars going on, and we have very high interest rates. I would use interest rates as kind of a cue to you know as another indicator that helps you make a decision about what you want to do in the morning um, with your with with Tesla. So. Uh, watch interest rates and interest rates are very, very high right now. Like we're making like a backwards cup and handle pattern on the 10 year. Their 30 year looks just as sick. This is a, this is terrible. You can hope for a triple top, but it's really going to be dependent on, um, the, the global, global uncertainty that, uh, that plays out again over the course of a night and into the morning. And, uh, of course we have a bunch of fed speakers as well, but really, um, there's this kind of, there's this feeling in the market, like, you know, it's, it's. It, it's fighting so much resistance when in reality, you would think by now that you would be making those higher highs uh, that typically happen towards the end of October or seasonality aspect. But, you know, we're not seeing that right now. We're actually seeing what could be a very long topping pattern when it comes to the S&P 500. Um, this is SPY. But, you know, we have some good news. I mean, Netflix did really well. Netflix is up a lot in the after hours. It's up, uh, you know, 12 percent, whereas Tesla would be most likely down um considerably uh maybe just basically inverse of netflix move i mean if you want to talk about why it happened um i really think when it comes down to it is just there wasn't much positivity to talk about in the way they conveyed the, the message of you know difficulty with cyber truck production and um overall macro conditions you can tell elon likes to get in these kind of rants about um risk and that's acceptable and you see you hear it on other calls um, but it's it's never countered with the positive of what the company's doing not highlighting the fact that, you know, energy is growing. They talk about energy growing, but they also caveat that with there's caveat is that, okay, energy is growing, but you know, it's lumpy. Deliveries are lumpy, meaning that we, our revenue would be lumpy. Meaning if there might be a lot in transit because they're so large, these mega pack batteries are humongous, that there, you might catch me off in a quarter where I didn't deliver enough to show the gains that I got, you know, from previous quarters. And, and, and I mean, meaning a growth rate, really. Uh, and when it comes to the, the, the shutdowns in the factory and when it comes to um, deliveries production there is not much clarification of that um, but we, the, the, you know, they didn't really focus on the cost of goods though that came uh, as a result of all these factory upgrades is the cost of goods um, the cost per vehicle has gone down considerably almost two thousand um, dollars but th then they what do they say again they they counter that by saying you know we're going to have a lot of <laughs> expenses going into this quarter with a whole bunch of new lines and things like that so oh well um, I think that might be it for now. I would just say stay in your toes tomorrow morning. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to do, look at the other charts. Really. I think what you all you need to do is look at yields. Um, and you can, you can understand how yields are getting to the point that is, are, are they breaking through and meaning that these yields are not enough for bondholders. They want more people say they want around five point, what 5.3, right? We've been looking at that for a long time. That would be really devastating and that'd be really unfortunate for all equities, just not Tesla. All right, guys, thanks so much for listening and good luck to us tomorrow. Bye.